Hello, my friend. Favorites and fails time. Once again, it's amazing how fast sometimes the month goes by when you're busy, you got stuff going on. But it is time to talk about the best and the worst products I tried this month. Because my purchasing has gone down, the number of products I'm trying is less. And yeah, I only have eight favorites and fails for you this month, but they're interesting ones. So if you're interested to know what they are, hang tight. We're getting into it right now. If you've been to my countdowns before, you know I always start off with a hashtag not sponsored feature. I get brands contacting me all the time asking me to sponsor my favorites and just kind of sneak their product in the top of the countdown and I'm like, no, that is so freaking sketch. So instead, I combat that by doing hashtag not sponsored and telling you something that I am not paid to tell you, a thing that I'm loving, a charity, a local business, something like that. And this time, I'm gonna be telling you about an app that I think you are absolutely going to love that I found. It is called Beauty Keeper. I've been struggling for a very long time to find a system that works for me to kind of categorize my makeup as far as expiration and Beauty Keeper has been fantastic. The thing I like most about it is it is very simple. So when I get a new makeup product, all I do is I hit the plus button for new and then you pick what category it is. So let's say makeup and fragrance. Let's say it's a deodorant. I don't know. And then you put in the product name and the brand. Let's say I bought it and I don't want to open it yet. I can still put it in here so when I open it, I can put in the day that I opened it and then the clock starts ticking. It automatically has in here the typical period after opening for that particular type of product. So if it's not labeled on there, you don't have to worry about it if it doesn't have one of those little jar things because not everything has it, especially things that are not sold outside of the United States. But you can also change it if for some reason the expiration doesn't doesn't match. And of course you can use this for skincare as well. It is super fab. You can add a little notes there, which I don't, I don't ever do because I'm lazy. <laughs> and then what it does is it keeps an organized list of the products that you have and when they expire. And then when something expires, it goes into a special category and then you can click on it and you can delete it whenever you get rid of it and it has been fantastic. For a while I was trying to do like coded stickers on the bottoms of my products, but what I found out was that they were falling off and it was a nice idea in theory, but in execution it just wasn't convenient enough to like, where did I put my stickers and what, what color am I supposed to be using? And it was just too much. This is just so much freaking easier. So if you were looking for something like that, I highly recommend that app. I've been using it again. This is not sponsored. They have no idea who I am. Uh, I've just really been loving it and I wanted to share it with you. So with that being said, let's talk about the worst product I tried this month. So this is really the only product that I didn't like that I tried this month. And this was something I had actually put in Beauty Keeper a couple months ago and didn't use it and then recently opened it and I was like, ugh. I, I didn't enjoy it. This is the Lauren Conrad, the lip gloss. And I believe I got this from Ipsy. And really there's nothing wrong with the shade. There's nothing wrong with the texture. It feels really nice on the lips. The problem is the smell. It smells absolutely awful. It just smells like chemicals and plastic and it's strong. It lingers on the lips. Like I don't mind it so much if it's really mild and it doesn't, you know, it maybe it'll mix with my other lip products and I can't really smell it after a while. No, this stays on the lips and your nose is right there. So it's like you can't help but smell it and it just smells awful. And I don't know if I just got a bad one or something. If you've ever tried this lip gloss and you've had a good experience, yours didn't smell, please let me know. Uh, I would love to know if this was just a problem with mine or if this is just the way that these products are, but this was absolutely awful. Okay, the next product isn't a bad product. I was just kind of hoping it would be better than it is. This is the Essence Lash Princess Curl and Volume Mascara. And this is, you know, one of my favorite mascaras of all time is the Essence Lash Princess. I know some people have trouble with it flaking. I've never had that problem. I, I love the Lash Princess mascaras. They're, they're seriously some of my favorites. They're definitely my favorite drugstore mascara. Now with this, I didn't love it. And I'm really sad that I didn't love it. It's just fine. 
it's definitely my least favorite of the Essence Lash Princess mascaras. It gives a little bit of length, a little bit of volume. If you're not looking for a whole lot, then yeah, maybe, but it's really, I mean, I need a lot for my lashes. I need, give me some pow. And I was really hoping this was gonna be the pow that Essence Lash Princess mascaras usually are, but for me, this one was pretty weak and it makes me kind of sad. This next one I really thought was going to be a full review, but I honestly did not have the patience. I thought about it, and every time I thought about doing a full review, I was like, I don't want to do this. So let's just put it in favorites and fails. You've probably seen these on Instagram. They're advertised very heavily over there. They're the Ahura Nails. I have a bunch of these. I've been using them for the past few months, and I'm ready to tell you kind of what I think about them. So this is a brand new box. I haven't used these, but I'm going to go ahead and open them up, show you what you get. Basically, the idea behind these is their gel nails that you can do at home and they have all kinds of really cool designs that you can do. You get this little pack here and it comes sealed. And then inside, you get basically like nail stickers, if you remember when that was a huge trend. But the difference with these is that they need curing, just like gel polishes. So you want to make sure you use some kind of sunscreen on your hands before you put these on because you are using a UV light with them. This is their UV light. You do get a free one with your first order. I will say that they are absolutely beautiful, but they do have limitations. The first limitation is just the selection that they give you. They give you usually some blank ones and then some designs, but the problem is a lot of times the designs don't have a pair. So if I wanna put a design on these two nails, I don't have two that are the exact same size to put on those nails. I'm kind of forced to either use one that's slightly too big or slightly too small for one hand, or I can just use it on a different finger, which isn't my preference. I kind of like my nails to match whichever one I'm using as an accent nail. The other thing is, is that naturally, as something like this grows out, it creates a space at the nail bed. So it gets stuck in my hair really bad and it pulls my hair out, which I don't like. Cause you know, you go like this and, and it, you know, gets stuck underneath the nail and it'll yank my hair out. I've pulled out three, four hairs at a time and it really hurts. But I think that's just the thing with gel nails, with fake nails in general that happens. I just wanted to note it just in case you've never used these before, so you were aware that that happens. The other thing is with these, unlike fake like press-on nails, you have to have a nail shape that you like as far as putting them on because all they do is go over top of your natural nails. So you wanna you know shape your nails so they're all the same size, whatever your preference is, but if you have naturally short nails and you wanted like longer looking nails, this of course isn't going to do that for you. But lasting power on them is really, really good. Usually they'll last me a week to a week and a half before they start chipping so much that they just kind of look icky. Um, usually it'll take about three, four, five days before I get my first chip, but it's usually very, very small. So will I buy more Ahura nails? Probably. I, I do really like them. I just, you know, they're fine. <laughs> the big the big thing that I hate is the, the fact that the size is they don't give you the accent nails that are the same size. So you can see it right here with the brown. Like, what if I want to do an accent nail with, with this brown? I can't. I can only do it on one hand, you know? It's just, it's just weird. That's really annoying. That's the big thing that I don't like about them. So they're kind of inching toward the middle because I do like some things, but there's some things I really don't. It has been a very long time since I've liked a eyeliner pencil. <laughs> I, I typically use eyeshadow on my lower lash line and then I use a liquid liner on my upper lash line. But these were sent to me by Marlena from Makeup Geek and I have really been loving these. You remember when the Urban Decay 24 seven glide on pencils were such a big deal. They made all these really cool colors and my issue with those is they tended to run on me but I really like the color selection. Marlena's come out with a great color selection of these and they don't run on me. The only reason why they're a little lower down 
down is just because I'm not a huge fan of eyeliner pencils just as a whole, just as a category, and I like everything else better. But they're fantastic eye pencils. These are the ones I've been using the most, the shade Royal, which is a purple, the shade Obsidian, which is a black, and then the shade Midnight, which is a blue. I'm just gonna swatch them all for you so you can see they're just very creamy, very easy to go on. You can even use these as like an upper lash line liner and then smudge them out over top of eyeshadow. They look really pretty that way. They're just so creamy and easy to go on and the lasting power is fantastic. Highly, highly, highly recommend these. Also sent in PR, the Makeup by Mario Earthy Pink Shade of the Cream Blush. I've really, really been loving this so much. It is just beautiful and blended out. Oh my gosh, just gorgeous. Now my, my only complaint about these is just that they are very pigmented, so you kind of have to work quickly. If you have a deeper skin tone, you probably won't have as much problem as somebody with a lighter skin tone uh, because your skin will be able to handle more pigmented pigmentation than like I can. You can see how beautifully it blends out. Just if you have a lighter skin tone, you want to kind of dab it on and then you can either choose to use the brush on the other side or your fingertips. I find I like using my fingertips better than the brush, but you'll have to tell me if you've tried these, whether you like using the brush better or not. I just really like the lasting power on them and they look really pretty on the skin. If you have dry skin, these can give you a little bit of hydration as well based on the ingredient deck. And it's just a very, very nice form formula. I definitely recommend them. I've talked about this a few times on my channel, the kind of videos that I like to watch on YouTube. And one of the categories is ASMR and they're basically relaxation videos. If you don't know what it is and you search for it, I'm just telling you, you'll either really love it or you'll really hate it, but you'll probably either way go down a rabbit hole of what the heck is this. <laughs> One of the channels that I watch a lot is a channel called Diamond ASMR, and she actually has her own cosmetic company. She sells lip products, mostly lip glosses and lip oils. So I decided I was going to purchase a few of them and I've very much been enjoying them. This one has been my favorite. You know, I, I wish I could tell you which category <laughs> this is in. It feels like a lip gloss, I'm assuming it's a lip gloss, but I can't verify that because she currently has her site on pause so she can do a big restock because they've been selling really well lately. Uh, but if I can get that information before this video goes live, I will put it in the video description for you. This is in the shade Fizz Pop and it tastes like Coca-Cola basically. And it kind of looks like it too. Like you can see all the swirls of this like creamy shade and then there's just the tiniest tad, teeny little bit of, uh, of glitter in here. And it's just absolutely absolutely beautiful. There isn't a stick to it. It is a little bit heavy, but it's just a beautiful gloss. Let me go ahead and swatch it for you. And I'm just so happy for her. It's I love supporting small businesses and look at that. It's just so pretty. Of course, when you blend it in, if you put it on over a lipstick, there really isn't a ton of pigmentation to it, but the scent is really good. It's exactly what you would think of. It's real, actually more like, more like root beer. It's root beer. It's not Coke, it's root beer. 100% and it's just, it's a really nice gloss and indie brands and small businesses, yay, and they're great. So when she restocks, which I think is going to be by the time this video goes live, I'll, I'll link it down below in case you wanna check it out. Um, yeah, I just, I really like it. All right, this was a product that was sent to me a really long time ago, and I'm pretty sure I talked about it in PR Purchase of the Week for What's Up in Makeup recently, and I cannot stop using this little palette. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I like, I wanna bathe myself in this one shade specifically. This is the Peach Sea palette. Uh, it's Soft Coral is the name of the shade of this. This was sent to me by Yes Style a while ago. Uh, I didn't really mention a lot of stuff. I, I mentioned them here and there in Favorites and Fails, but not a ton, uh, nothing really stood out to do like a full like video review, but I've been mentioning them here and there. And this is just something I've been reaching for all the time lately. This shade right here is what's all over my lid and I cannot stop. It's pink with a yellow shift and it is just freaking gorgeous. Like I can't, I can't even with this. I loved this so much today. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna bathe in this as much as possible. I used it as my highlight and I also tapped it on top of my lips over a CoverGirl lipstick. This is the shade Romance Mauve of their, I think it's called Exhibitionist, is this line of lipsticks. I tapped it in the middle because I just, I wanted this all over my 
freaking face. Just so, so incredibly pretty. Uh, and it's just a great little palette. Uh, it, the pigmentation isn't super, super poppy, but it's very easy to blend and it doesn't blend away. So if you have a deeper skin tone, you may want to see if you can find one that has a little bit more depth to it because it may not be enough for you to be completely honest. Um, but if you have a very light skin tone to kind of my skin tone, maybe inching toward medium, I think you'll really, really love this. I, I've just been, I've, this is what I've been using a lot. So that's why I wanted to mention it. And then finally, at number one, a product that surprised me that I've been using a lot and it's like, Man, I really like this product. Uh, also set in PR, but also quite a while ago, and I just can't stop using it. This is the Sigma Kabuki brush. This is the 3D HD brush, and I use this for uh, liquid foundation. And the reason why I love this is because it has the two sides, so I can swipe, 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 swipe. So it's just kind of a different take on a flat top kabuki brush. It fits to the face better, where with a flat top, you're kind of like mushing it. I don't know, it just, it's like it's, it doesn't, curve to your face as well. I'm kind of being nitpicky. Can you still use a flat top kabuki and have it do almost the same thing? Probably. It's just the ease of use of this back and forth is just really, really nice. I love the way it blends my foundation. I don't know if they have the pink ones anymore because I think these were for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. If you're looking for a good foundation brush for liquid foundation, this has definitely been my favorite recently. At this point, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it. I would love to know your thoughts on anything I talked about today, whether you've tried it, not tried it, liked it, agreed with me, did not like it, disagreed with me, whatever, whatever you think about these products. And if you aren't interested in any of this, what have you been trying and loving or disliking? Maybe I'll buy it in the future and try it for myself. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you would like to hang out a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you right over here to watch. But if it is your time to go, it is absolutely no problem at all. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did and mad love to you and I'll see you in a video very very soon.